For my topic, I'm going to talk about comprehension and decision making among juveniles and the psychology of that. And also why I think it is unethical in the majority of circumstances to charge minors as adults. So to the matter of comprehension and decision making, it is known that the part of the brain that is key to reasoning, problem solving, comprehension, impulse control, creativity, and perseverance is the prefrontal cortex. It is important to note that the prefrontal cortex is not fully developed until the age of 25. Because this part of the brain is not developed until around that age, um, adolescents, juveniles, or teenagers um, rely on the part of the brain called the amygdala to make decisions and solve problems. In contrast to adults around the age of 25 and up, who use the prefrontal cortex. Also, the amygdala is associated with emotions, impulses, aggression, and instinctive behavior. Now, I personally feel that it is unjust in the majority of circumstances for a court of law to charge a minor or juvenile as an adult given the fact that their prefrontal cortex is not fully developed and they're relying on a part of the brain that is more animalistic to make decisions. And for that fact, their decisions are based more on impulse rather than comprehension of consequences. Whereas if their prefrontal cortex is fully developed, they may make decisions that are more rationalized and they may have a deeper comprehension of their circumstances as well as a deeper comprehension of the actions that they take and the consequences to those actions. Recently, in my English class, we finished reading a book called The 57 Bus. And the book is based on a true story, and all the events and characters in the book are real. In the book, there is a character named Richard. Richard is a 16-year-old boy who lights a person's skirt on fire on a bus. The person who got lit on fire by Richard is named Sasha. Sasha is non-binary, and their pronouns are they slash them. Of course, Richard was taken into custody after committing this crime, and once he arrived at the police station, the officers in the interrogation room read him his rights and then brought in food and then proceeded to ask him questions. And, of course, Richard decided to answer those questions. I personally feel that Richard did not comprehend the rights that were read to him, and if he did, I feel as though he would have remained silent and would have waited for an attorney to be appointed to him. And I also think that the officers, in a sense, manipulated Richard by bringing in the food and then proceeding to ask him questions. In the end, Richard was charged as an adult. His charges were aggravated mayhem and assault with intent to cause great bodily harm. Both these felonies each come with a hate crime clause that add some additional years to his sentence. I'm not defending Richard's actions. I don't think it was justified to light Sasha's skirt on fire, even if I think he was the victim of peer pressure. I just don't think he should have been tried as an adult. Richard is only 16, and the part of his brain that he's thinking with is his amygdala and not his prefrontal cortex. And because of that fact, Richard is more susceptible to peer pressure. The reason why I bring up peer pressure is because on the bus, Richard was accompanied by two of his friends. His two friends did nothing to stop him from lighting Sasha's skirt on fire, and one of his friends even gave him the lighter to actually light Sasha on fire. In the end, Richard went to prison for seven years. The court may have been more lenient if he wasn't charged as an adult, but that's just not how it went down. I think the judicial system needs a better understanding of the cognitive psychology of a juvenile in contrast to the cognitive psychology of an adult. Thank you for watching. The End.